हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मसल्स ऑफ मास्टिकेशन मास्टिकेशन मीन्स टू चू एंड द फोर मेन मसल्स विच आर रिलेटेड टू द मास्टिकेशन प्रोसेस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस देयर ओरिजिन इंसर्शन नर्व सप्लाई एज वेल एज द एक्शन इन दिस वीडियो सो सी द वीडियो अप टू द लास्ट सो लेट्स बिगिन द टॉपिक फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मेजेटर मसल so on to the muscle of uh, mastication uh, the masseter having the two component superficial as well as the deep component so let's discuss first the superficial uh, component of the masseter uh, muscle so here you can see the superficial part of the masseter originates from the zygomatic process of the maxilla zygomatic bone and it is uh, directed uh, downward backward and inserted onto the which part of the mandible then the answer is the ramus of the mandible now let's discuss about the deep part of the masseter muscle so deep part here it is originating from the zygomatic arch then it is directed vertically not oblique it is just vertically directed and inserted onto the ramus of the mandible but not like the deep part, not like the superficial part it is directed vertically and in the middle part of the ramus of the mandible it's just like a rectangular shape so that's how superficial and the deep part of the masseter muscle and what is the action of the masseter so when the masseter muscle contracts it draws the mandible above it helps into the elevation of the mandible so you can easily say the other muscles also help into the elevation of the mandible three muscles mainly do elevation and one only do depression and that is the lateral pterygoid but now let's discuss about the second muscle of mastication temporalis temporalis muscle is a white or you can say fan shaped muscle it's originating from the temporal fascia anterior fibers you can say that it is originating from frontal parietal temporal sphenoid all are lying deep to the temporalis muscle its anterior fibers vertical middle fiber oblique and posterior fibers are horizontally placed more of the horizontal not exert the horizontal then you can see here these fibers are converging towards the one part of the mandible and what is that part that is part is the coronoid process of the mandible so you are not easily uh, look at which part of the mandible so uh, we will discuss uh, let's again uh, the see the coronoid process or you can say coronoid part of the mandible so here uh, the mandible part let's locate the mandible part yeah here this is the coronoid process and these muscles fiber are inserted onto the coronoid process don't confuse it with the condylar process because the anterior is a coronoid process and posteriorly which forms into the tm joint is basically condylar process so here temporalis is inserted onto the coronoid and what are the actions of the temporalis muscle it helps into the elevation of the mandible it also helps into the side to side movement as well as its posterior horizontal fiber also helps into the retraction of the mandible means draws the mandible backward so we have finished the masseter as well as the temporalis let's move towards the pterygoid muscles so lateral pterygoid first lateral pterygoid having the two part the upper head as well as the lower head so let's discuss first the upper head so uh, for the upper head discussion uh, you can easily see here the sphenoid bone where is the sphenoid yes this is the sphenoid bone and from the greater wing of the sphenoid bone this upper head has been uh, starting it is a uh, directed backward as well as the laterally so here it is the greater wing of the sphenoid from where it is uh, going uh, backward laterally and inserted onto the anterior surface of the neck of the mandible so always remember backward laterally and the anterior surface of the neck of the mandible it is a part of the condylar process so this is that's how finish the upper head of the lateral pterygoid now uh, let's move towards the lower head of the lateral pterygoid so for the discussion of the lower head of the lateral pterygoid we will see a different angle so here uh, we can easily see the sphenoid bone it is having lateral pterygoid it is having the medial pterygoid plates so two plates but on the lateral plate we can divide into the two surfaces medial surface as well as the lateral surface so this lateral pterygoid originates from the lateral surface of the lateral pterygoid plate so you can easily see here from this angle 
this is the lateral derivative plate onto the lateral surface of the lateral derivative plate this is originating and going uh, you can say backward as well as you can say laterally and inserted onto the slightly higher than the origin and it is also onto the neck of the mandible but its insertion is higher than the origin that's why it is a uh, helpful for the you can say depression of the mandible it is a uh, towards the gravity movement so no much muscle action is required now let's move towards the medial uh, pterygoid it is having the superficial as well as the deep head the superficial head here and this is the deep head the deep head originates from which part of the lateral pterygoid plate so for that we will uh, see the sphenoid bone lateral pterygoid plate medial pterygoid plate and you can easily look here on to the yes this part you can easily see this is the lateral pterygoid plate and onto its a medial surface lateral pterygoid plate medial surface there is a origin of the medial pterygoid muscle yes lateral pterygoid plate but medial surface and the deep head which is a large than the superficial head so you can easily see here the medial pterygoid muscle and the superficial head is mainly starting from the maxilla as well as its adjoining bone part this is the maxilla and from where the superficial part of the medial pterygoids origin now what is the insertion of the medial pterygoid muscle so medial pterygoid muscle inserted onto the ramus of the mandible but onto the inside its direction is dbl downward backward and the laterally it is originated onto the mandible inserted onto the mandible so that's how the medial pterygoid muscle is inserted onto the inner side of the mandible the masseter was from the outer side of the mandible so that's how the medial pterygoid muscle is inserted now what is the movement so medial pterygoid muscle when contracts it also helps into the elevation of the mandible it also helps into the protrusion as well as the side to side movement of the mandible now this is the lateral pterygoid we just forgotten to tell you that lateral pterygoid when contracts it is helpful for depression as well as the protrusion as well as a side to side uh, movements so that's how the muscle of mastications are originated inserted and their actions are all are supplied by the mandibular now so masseter temporalis let's remove the masseter superficial part you can say deep part of the masseter then there is a lateral pterygoid upper head lower head as well as the medial pterygoid superficial as well as the deep part of the medial pterygoid thanks for uh, listening